So when you're having to live with Windows and Linux and you need to use both of them, you probably want to go with either a dual boot scenario with two hard drives, or if you only have the capability of affording one hard drive, you can do that with partitioning. And in this video, I'm gonna go over the installation steps for installing Windows on a partition and then Linux on a separate partition on one hard drive. The easiest way to do it is with two hard drives, but like I said, not everybody has those means. I understand that. Now there are a few caveats to get out of the way before we get started. Since you're gonna be using Windows and Linux together, your bootloader needs to be set up in the proper order. I would highly suggest the easiest way of going about this by installing Windows first. We will be doing that in this video. You would then install Linux. If you install Linux first and then you install Windows, well, Windows is a greedy, greedy little bitch and the bootloader in Windows will take control over the bootloader that Linux sets up and it'll fight back and forth. You can fix that. There's a little tinkering you can do, but if you want the easiest way, follow the guide in the video. Windows first, then Linux. If you're gonna be staying on Windows 10, it's going to expire at the end of October. There's a couple hacks around it, one of them being Windows 10 Enterprise LTS, long-term service. You can purchase a copy. I've got an affiliate link I'll leave in the description down below for about $10. You'll have to reinstall Windows. You won't be able to just upgrade the version of Windows you have to an enterprise version. Home and Pro, they just don't upgrade to enterprise. And if you're going to be switching to Windows 11, if you're not gonna be using the Chris Titus WinUtil to strip out all the other crap and then watch one of my follow-up videos that I post after this one on how to block all the telemetry, you do have an option of purchasing a license for Windows 11 Enterprise. They go for about seven or eight dollars and I'll have a link in the description to one of my affiliates as well. They will still possibly be hit by Windows Recall and Windows Copilot. But like I said, in a follow-up video, I'm going to have more ways to block all of these services that Windows trying to shove down everyone's throat. But if you buy an enterprise copy, it's gonna protect you more than anything, especially if you stay on Windows 10 enterprise long-term service. So with that last caveat out of the way, on with the installation. Here's our virtual machine setup. For this demo, I'm only gonna have one virtual hard drive and we're gonna partition it. We're gonna install Windows first. Uh, if you'll notice over here, I have created the Windows 11 ISO and I did the Chris Titus build. That's in a previous video. I'll have it linked in the show notes. That strips out all the telemetry, all the extra added bullshit that Microsoft packs into Windows ISOs. So that'll help protect you right from the get-go from all their little bullshit spyware they have. In a video that I'm gonna do after this, I'm gonna have set up to where you can harden Windows and also block all kinds of extra telemetry using a pie hole and I'll go through all that in another video. But for this one, we're just gonna be installing this with the Chris Titus build ISO, Windows 11, and then after that, we're gonna install Cache OS so you can dual boot the system. For this, I'm just using a virtual disk that's gonna be 128 gigs, and let's go ahead and fire this thing up. Okay, so right here, it's pretty standard installation. Next, next. We're doing a fresh install. Now right here, if you've only got one hard drive, you're gonna create a partition. If you've got two hard drives, you would put Windows on disk zero, and then you would put your Linux on disk one. For this situation, we're gonna do a partition. This is showing that it's recognizing 131 gigs. We're gonna say, chop that in half to 64. Give that a minute. Okay, so we're gonna have our leftover space, this partition right here, the unallocated, that's gonna be for your Linux install. And for Windows, we're gonna choose this right here, the 62 gigs. Now, obviously your hard drive's gonna have different numbers. And we're gonna hit install. Now, everything from this point is pretty much standard. Just know that since I use the Chris Titus build, I had it go ahead and set up my username and password for me. So it's gonna auto log in. 
Yay, all right, and there we are. We've got our hideous Windows 11 install. We'll go ahead and shut this down. This is gonna be the point where you put in your Linux installation media. For me, I'm gonna come over to my virtual machine and swap this over to Cache OS. All right, so we power the system on. We go to our Cache OS installer or whatever distribution you have. For Cache OS, we always want to choose the Lamine bootloader. That is, if you want the capability of rolling your operating system back. This is a virtual machine that I'm going to destroy, but just for good measure, I'm going to choose the Lamine bootloader. Okay, we're going to go ahead and hit next. We're going to come down to manual partitioning. Select our free space. We're going to select create. Choose all of your remaining space. That's default. I'm choosing the BetterFS file system because it gives us that rollback feature with the Lamine bootloader. I'm going to say slash, give it the boot option, and the swap option. And make sure it's selected. Hit next. It's going to give us a warning saying it needs to be at least that size. It's already that size. I'm just going to go with the default with Plasma. You can choose whatever desktop environment you want. We're just going to take all the defaults here. Impulse. I'll just tell it to go ahead and log in automatically. You set all the things that you need right there for yourself. The yellow is going to be your Windows install. The red is going to be your Linux install. For us, it's Cache OS for this demo. And install. All right, and it's time to restart. For me, I'm going to go ahead and after I hit done, I'm going to power down my virtual machine and I'm going to remove the installation media. This is where the you would remove your USB drive. Okay, we'll go ahead and fire it back up. <clears throat> and now we've got our Cache OS installed. We'll go ahead and boot into it. There we go. And just to show you, we can now restart and go into Windows as well. And there's our Windows install. Now, I do want to show you something on your Linux install because you can access the hard drive or the partition of Windows. If your daily driver is Linux like mine is, but you still have to work with Windows, you can copy files from your partition in your Linux install over to Windows. And I'll go ahead and show you how that's done. So say we've been working on Linux and we've got some work files that we need to transfer over to Windows. All we need to do is open up our Dolphin Explorer. Uh, if you're on KDE, that's Dolphin. If you're on GNOME, you're going to have Nautilus or whatever file manager you have. But we're going to be looking for a basic data partition that's under devices. We'll just enter in our Linux password. And this is going to be the hard drive for Windows, just your standard file system set up for Windows. We're going to go into Users. My username was Impulse. Yours is whatever you set it to. And let's go into the desktop. Now here we could create a folder if we wanted to, just for instance, new folder, whatever. 
or say we had a file we were working with on our Linux desktop, and when we reboot, we're going to see these files show up on our desktop of Windows. And there they are. Now, obviously, if you had a server or a network attached storage, a home lab set up, you could just copy your files onto your server, home lab, your NAS, and then just access them that way. But if you don't have that kind of setup, if you're limited, this is the way to get around it so you can swap files back and forth between the operating systems. I wouldn't suggest doing that from Windows to Linux. That could screw up <laughs> your boot loader and everything. Like Windows just doesn't have that option here. You can get into it, but it's gonna screw things up. If you wanted to transfer things from Windows into Linux, you're going to have to use removable media. That's the safest way to do it. So that kind of wraps up the demo that we've got here. I know this can all be a little overwhelming for all you newcomers to Linux and having to dual boot systems and home labs and home servers and all that crap. But in the long run, if you invest your time and effort into it, it is 100% worth it. Because unfortunately, we cannot buy products off the shelf anymore that aren't loaded up with crazy spyware. It's, it's insane. So invest in yourself, invest in your digital privacy, uncloud your life. I'll catch you in the next one.